All right, so this first one up here, what should I put in this blank? No, what you were going to say before. Speed. You put a thermometer in something, the reason that the temperature goes up on the thermometer is because the thermometer is being pounded by the molecules that, is in, that it is in contact with. So the more those molecules are moving, the faster they're moving, the higher their average kinetic energy, the higher the temperature, the more that the, the, the thermometer is going to be displaced. So you raise something's temp, all you're doing is what to its molecules? Making it move faster. That's it. You're just making it move faster. Did you put kinetic energy in that one space? Um, did you say kinetic energy? I did. I just wrote K. You'd have to put a line over the top of it or write average kinetic energy because it wouldn't be its kinetic energy. It would be its average kinetic energy. Okay, so what am I looking for in this one? This next question. No. I'm, no, I'm not. Oh, wait. I'm, I am. Sorry. I am heat. How much heat? I am looking for an answer that has units of calories. Do you have any calories up here anywhere? Yeah. Right away, I've got this 0.11 calorie per gram degree C. And so what I need to do, I've got the calorie unit right where I want it. What I need to do now is to get rid of the grams and get rid of the degree C. So how am I going to get rid of the grams? So if I put 220 grams up top, then my gram unit's going to cancel out, and then I'm just left with this degree C unit. So what, what do you want to do with that? Yeah, this isn't about what the temperature is or what the temperature was. It's about how much the temp went up. So in this case, the number that's going to have to go in here is going to be 82. So I'll put an 82 degrees C here, and that's going to cancel there. And then I'm going to get irritated with the keyboard. And somebody has this? 1984 calories. This is random that it was that number. Might turn out to be like that with Mr. Trump. So uh, is that the right number? One nine eight, one nine eight zero, one nine eight zero. Everybody okay with that? Yeah. There's only three sig figs up here, so I can't report that four. So one nine eight zero calories would be my answer. All right, so we're gonna act like what we were really looking for with this one is what the initial temperature of the lead was. So I said draw a little picture because you're looking at some water. And some lead and it goes in here and I got this lead sitting at the bottom of this water so I should be able to figure out a few things before I start the problem so what kinds of pieces of information should you be aware of yeah you'd have to know what the specific heat of water is which is one but from the information what do you already know about the lead no actually I don't know that it's it's hot The temp of the water went up, right? We can see that. Why did it stop going up? Okay, so what do I know? I know a very specific piece of information. I know an actual number with a unit. The lead 60 degrees Celsius when this is over. The water stopped raising because it equaled the lead's temperature. The average kinetic energy of both of those substances, the water and the lead, became the same. So the only reason that the lead's temp stopped dropping was because it hit the water's temp. And so no energy transfer because they have the same amount of kinetic energy. So I already know the initial or the final temperature of the lead is going to be 60 degrees. What do I know about the energy that was put into the water? Anything else? It came from the lead, right? 
So what can you say about the, the energy or the Q value for the water? I didn't hear you. It's lead's output, right? So whatever water's Q increase was, that was lead's Q negative. Same exact number, but opposite sign. So if we can figure out what the increase in energy for the water was, then we can figure out what the decrease in energy from the lead was. And since we know what the final temperature of the lead was, then I can calculate the initial temperature of the lead. So I'm looking for a calorie unit because I'm looking for how much energy the water absorbed. So that's one, one calorie per gram degree C. And I've got 300 grams of water. And I've, I don't know why that's happening. And I've got uh, a temperature change of 45. No idea. Okay. So I think it's 10,500 calories. Oh, it's 13? Okay. I'm just trying to remember from yesterday. So 13,500 calories is what the water absorbed. And so then the, the heat of the lead. Is that the Q value? Yeah, that's the Q value. So my Q of the lead is going to be negative 13,500 calories. That good? All right. Um, I'm trying to find the initial temperature. So what I need is to find a temperature unit. And so what I'm going to do is start off with degrees C, grams degrees C, 0 0.038 calories. Why did I uh, start my railroad track off like that? I want degrees C in my answer. So how am I going to get rid of the calories? We're talking about the lead. I'm going to use what I just figured out, right? This negative 13,500 calories. And I got to make sure that it's a negative value because it lost that heat. Okay. If you're figuring it for the lead, you use its Q value. Correct. So I need to get rid of the grams. So that'll be 80 grams down here. And so the grams are gone. And so then I've got degrees C, and it's like 4,400 or something like that. Four four four, one. Is that what it was? Thirteen thousand five hundred divided by eighty divided by point zero three eight. Yeah. Okay, so it's negative four thousand four hundred and forty one degrees C. What is that a measure of? But what? Temperature of what? Not the temperature of the lead. I didn't hear you. It sounded right, though. It's the ch not the water, the lead. It's the change in the temperature of the lead. It's not the lead's temperature. It's the amount of heat or the amount of temperature change of the lead. So what can I say about this lead? Its temp dropped dramatically, right? 4,000 degrees its temp went down over that. Okay, so... Is that what I want to know? I know what it's at, and I know how much it lost. So how do I figure out what it started at? Delta T is equal to temperature final minus temperature initial, right? And I know that the change was negative 4441 degrees C. And I know the final temperature is 0 or 60 degrees C. And I don't know what the initial temperature is. So I do a little bit of algebra, and I flop the temperature initial onto the other side. And I just add them up. So we end up with uh, the temperature initial being, what is that, 4501? Is that right? Did I do that right? Looks okay. 
So then my answer for this one would be initial temperature would be 4,500 degrees C. Um, probably a, yeah, 4,500 degrees C. Are we good with that? That one was a little more involved, right? Walter? So I thought that to be good because it said chunk. That made me think solid. So I thought I was missing something. I see something like that on the Roll with it. Okay. He's asking about chunk because at this temperature, lead would be a liquid. Doesn't matter. It was a chunk of liquid lead that got plopped into there. It definitely solidified after it hit it. Why did the lead need to be at such a high temperature to change water 45 degrees Celsius? Water is very difficult to eat heat in comparison to lead. Lead is uh, it's like 4%. Um, it's like 96% harder to heat water than it is to heat lead, hence that 0 0.038. So much easier to heat the lead, which means it's much easier to do what to it? Cool it. So it's going to take a lot of heat inside that lead to actually get it to cool down enough to make any sort of change inside of the water. So have, have anybody seen any movies or actually know anybody who like makes their own bullets out of lead? Yeah. If you're, if you're heating that up to a liquid state, does it take a lot of water to cool it off to get it to be able to handle it? It's like, I feel like I'm putting it in two or three ounces of water and how could that pop, how could that liquid molten lead all of a sudden be cool enough for me to touch? And it, it totally is. The water's temp goes up like 20 degrees and I, don't, I can just put my hands in there and grab the thing. So it's, um, it's nice that water's temperature, it's, it's specific heat is so high in comparison to everything else. What, uh, what's a really good reason for the specific heat of water being high, being really good for our ecosystem and humans? What? What about it? Not just the fish, though, but for everything, right? We're constantly being pounded by radiation from the sun, and the water heats up during the day and cools down at night, but I don't get a dramatic change. It's harder to heat, it's harder to cool, so it's sort of a, a buffering or a mellowing effect of temperature change. If you live next to um, a lake, the temp is gonna be pretty constant as opposed to, uh, hmm. where's the mouse? If uh, you live out, I mean, desert, really hot during the night or day, right? And really cold at night. I mean, you could get frostbite in a desert and die of heat stroke in the summer or in the, in the daytime in the same place. And that's not going to happen if you're next to a lake. Okay. How about this next one? Ignite a piece of paper with a magnifying glass and sunlight. Why does the paper continue to burn after I've removed the heat source? spontaneous combustion of the cellulose. I, you're 100% right. I'm not completely sure you know why you're saying that, though. Well, just because the, the cell walls mm -hmm. have a, a way of regulating. So that's why what I was reading is like the paper doesn't just explode all at once. And it has this continuous burn. The spontaneous combustion can happen, but the paper happens over That's the, you're, you're looking at it much too uh, in depth, actually, than I'm thinking about. But you're right. It's sort of like a burning building. Like one room catches on fire, and then the heat between the two walls causes, causes the next room to catch on fire. So you might be at the other end of the house and not even know the other half of the house is burnt down. Um, I mean, I can hold a piece of paper, and three quarters of the piece of paper has been burnt, right? And I still don't even know it. If I'm, I'm not, all I'm doing is holding on to the piece of paper. The um, no, I take away the heat source, but it continues to burn. So tell me about the bonds. Uh, say that again. They're weak. I don't know what you mean by that. As in
Okay, but there's a second part to that. So it's not super hard to break the bonds of the glucose, which is essentially what the paper is, and Say again? What produces that heat, though? So it doesn't take a lot of energy to break those glucose bonds. And then I get a whole bunch of energy back when what happens? Well, I mean, technically, yeah, but when I make a new bond, that gives me a bunch of energy back. Maybe I didn't. Maybe we didn't get as far as I thought we did in the notes. Did we not get as far as in the notes as I thought we did? Are we behind the other class? Oh, Was it right? the, like actually thing? Because I was I wrote it out, and I just looked at the and it looked like it actually formed water. It does form a water. Energy in is less than energy out. So I initially start the cellulose burning, the glucose burns, and as it burns, it produces so much energy, what is it able to do? Continue the process. So energy in, energy out. The energy I get out of it is greater than the energy that I need to put into it. So once I get the thing going, I can remove the heat source and then it's gonna to continue to burn. I am positive there is wood in my wood stove right now, still burning. And I left it like an hour and a half ago. Close the flume and walk away and it'll sit there for hours, right? Okay.